So I'm out in the shop today and now that I have finished up the z-axis on the linear rail conversion I'm going to pause for a moment and turn my attention back to the original machine. In this video I'm going to be working on replacing the original Leeson uh, IEC metric motor and belt drive. Now those of you who have been following my channel know that I redid the belt drive and came up with a a one-piece quill to go along with the Marathon Micromax motor. However, I never installed that on this particular machine. I'm still using my extended quill. It's been working fine like this and it works good with the Leeson motor. However, the Leeson motor did not turn out to be what I had expected uh, originally. There's just no torque with this motor and so I wanted to upgrade this however this required me to switch over to 220 volt power and redo my entire control cabinet uh, and I just didn't want to get into that so after I upgraded to the clear path servos on this machine with that upgrade I didn't have to switch over to 220 volts I'm still running the 110 volt power source uh, to feed the VFD and the clear path so everything's still 110 volts so I thought well I'd just leave it but I ran across a one horsepower Marathon Micromax motor let me show you that so this Marathon Micromax motor I picked up used off of eBay uh, it looks barely used it's a one horsepower but what's nice about this particular motor is I can use my current electronic cabinet and my current VFD which is rated for one horsepower so I didn't have to do any more electrical upgrades other than just swapping this motor out and changing a few parameters in the VFD my buddy Chris found this on eBay and I decided to go ahead and pick one of these up now these this particular motor has the encoder and I just removed that because I'm not going to be using that but this is about a seven eight hundred dollar motor normally and uh, what makes this motor so special is it's an inverter duty and the torque ratio on this particular motor is a thousand to one it has a maximum safe speed of 5400 RPMs It runs at 1750 at 60 hertz, but it'll spin at 3505 at 120 hertz, which is about where we're going to be uh, running it. And we lose a little torque. The torque's rated at 3 at 60 hertz and 1.5 and at 120 hertz. But with the 1,000 to 1 torque ratio, uh, these motors are, are really a beast. So... I'm excited to get this motor installed and get it working on the original machine. By going with this motor, I'm going to be switching over to the one-piece quill. Uh, currently, I'm still running the extended quill version. I'm also going to be installing uh, the new risers. So this is the exact belt drive that I currently have available on my website same motor plate this motor plate is for a 145 TC motor however it also fix, fits this motor which is a 56 C frame now the only difference between that is the shaft on this motor is not it's only 5 8 of an inch whereas on the 145 frame it's 7 8 so what I've done is I've got this uh, adapter and this just converts it over from half in, or 5 8 inch shaft to 7 8 inch shaft. And that allows us to use the pulley in the belt drive kit. So we should be all set. It's just a matter of removing the old motor, bolting this one on, and getting it wired up. So let's go over to the mill and we'll get started on teardown. Alright, so I've got my air cylinder off here, and 
you can see I was still running the modified quill here that we threaded the end, put a slit of pulley down, and then uh, put our uh, spanner nut on there. So I'll be uh, next. I'm going to uh, disconnect the motor, remove it, remove the risers, and uh, then we'll take off this. Uh, pull the cover off the gearbox here and take off this modified quill. All right, I've got the lid pulled off. I've got my old quill and pulley removed from the lid, and now I'm just starting the reassembly. All right, so. What we've got in here now is I've just installed our bottom bearing. Now this is going to give us support for the bottom of our uh, new quill tube here. And so as belt pressure is put on here, it won't uh, it won't rock it. It'll keep it nice and straight. Just to provide a little bit more support. Um, this is just to replace the oil seal that was in here. So now all we have to do is we're going to take our new quill. And we're going to install this in our lid and we'll get that back assembled. Alright guys, well, I've got the motor mounted, belt tensioned, and now I'm just going to uh, start wiring this up. Now they, with the Lisa motor, I, I put these uh, terminal ends on here because it had uh, studs and nuts to secure the wiring to, but this Marathon motor does not. It's just got wires here. Now this is wired up for uh, 230 volt versus the 460 so we've got four five and six tied together and then we've got uh, two and eight one and seven and three and nine tied together this is just your typical low voltage setup so we'll just secure that I'm gonna clip these over clip these off strip the back and we'll just use a uh, wire nuts to secure this. Alright, so let me get this uh, wired up. Alright guys, well I've got the motor mounted, I've got it wired up, and I just left it like this temporarily because I wanted to make sure that the uh, rotation is correct and I also wanted to get everything, uh, the speed and everything set in the VFD. So. This, this motor is a lot quieter than the other motor. So I'm just checking the uh, speed here. So I've got my little flag here and just using a uh, tack. Let's see, hopefully you can see this. We'll try and see. All right, let's turn this on. So that's supposed to be 2,500 RPMs, and we're at 2,493. I can tell already that the motor's a lot quieter. We're going to bump it up to 5,000. And you can see it's even quieter at 5,000. And the speed right there at 5,000 is... 5021, 5023. So I think we're uh, got it just right. Uh, really happy. Because this motor doesn't have a fan, it's a lot quieter. Um, of course, it's a lot bigger. However, uh, it's a lot more powerful than the, even though they're both were uh, one horsepower, this one has a thousand to one torque. So hopefully this is this upgrade here is going to pay off. So let me get it buttoned up, get the uh, lift plate, the power draw bar, all that back assembled, and uh, get it all buttoned up. Also stops really really quickly, which is good. Very nice. Very happy so far. Alright, so let me get this buttoned up and uh, we'll see what we have. Alright guys, got the whole thing back together. Really, really excited. Uh, pretty close here on my clearance for the motor. You can see 
I was cutting that pretty close, but um, looks like there's just enough and that's all we really need. So now I just need to set the power draw bar and make sure that it is um, releasing the tool. So I've got an 80 millimeter air cylinder. Uh, this is a SDA T80 by 15 by 0. So it's 80 millimeter bore, 15 millimeter stroke. Uh, three stage and because I'm running this at 150 PSI I'm able to compress these Belleville's here however I always get the question well how do you set these up well when you release it the tool should just release at 150 PSI and then you know you have it adjusted so we're going to check it here. I haven't adjusted this yet. Let's see. So I've got it way too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen it a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to loosen it a little bit. And then we're going to recheck it. Still not releasing. Okay. There we go. Can go a little bit tighter. There we go. Maybe a little more. That's good right there. So now I know I have it adjusted to 150 PSI and I know that that's about where I need to be to get the holding strength that I'm looking for. Uh, so all of that is good. I replaced my original one inch spacer here with uh, this one here which is about an inch and three quarters and that it was to give me give me the clearance that I needed right here um, with the one inch spacer in there the motor was just about touching this and if I had belt stretch or anything I'm um, just not going to be able to push the motor back so I wanted to make sure that I've got myself some adjustment there also I probably will be doing the counterbalance modification on this machine as well this is needs to be trammed in and also having a bigger spacer here pushes the head out which gets me the ability to get behind the, a piece of part a bigger piece uh, clamped up in the vise now Wyatt's my buddy Wyatt's been running a two inch spacer here but this one's an inch and three quarters but his vise is a little bit bigger he, this is a uh, four inch he has the five inch and it uh, it hangs over the back a little bit further so he needed the extra clearance there so I'm just gonna go ahead now and uh, try to get this trammed in okay guys well I got the new motor I've got the new motor and everything assembled I've uh, checked everything out and now I'm just doing some test cuts just to see the difference between this motor and the Leeson. Now, I told you that this one is a thousand to one torque, so I expect to get better cuts right off the bat. So here's what we've got. I've got three quarter inch depth of cut. I'm taking a 80 thousandths pass, which I could never do with the Leeson motor. Um, I was pushing it to get anything around 60 thousandths with the Leeson. I'm going to be going at 30 inches per minute and this is a chip load of about .002 so let's just see what we've got 
we're going at 5,000 RPMs. As you can see, this new motor just ate that up. Very impressed with that. Uh, these are some serious chips that came off of there. So, uh, you could tell that the motor never really did slow down any. It just kept on going. Definitely, this motor is definitely uh, going to do the trick. What a, what a great upgrade. I'll be able to rough, take bigger rough cuts and not worry about it. Before, with the leasing motor, I was only comfortable taking 40 thousandths width of cut at 25 inches a minute, and I couldn't take it. Taking a full three quarter inch depth of cut was pushing it. So, uh, you may remember when I when I machined these counterbalance brackets, uh, I was taking this material out right here and this was a full three-quarter inch depth of cut but I was only running at 25 inches a minute and about uh, 40 thousandths width of cut I believe maybe it was 30 thousandths I'll have to go back and look at that but that's pretty much where I was comfortable running this so with this new motor um, we're gonna be able to bump those numbers up a little bit quite a bit actually and feel feel really confident that it's not going to be an issue. I'm probably going to do the counterbalance on this particular machine now. Now that I have the uh, belt drive modification on here, uh, it should work just fine. You can see this will sit up there like so. And then I'll be able to just run down and connect somewhere. Probably make some kind of bracket that screws in here to connect the chain to it. I don't think I can connect exactly right there because I have the um, the gib tightener adjustment screw right there. So that's going to uh, affect that slightly. But we'll work something out. Uh, that'll be in an upcoming video. A lot of things going on, guys. Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to stay on the linear rail conversion. However, there's just things like this that I've been trying to get done. Uh, for quite a long time and wasn't able to do so. Now, what motor is this? This is the uh, Marathon Micro Max. This is a one horsepower. The reason I went with the one horsepower is I didn't have to change any of my electrical in my control cabinet because I already had a one horsepower. I did purchase a one and a half horsepower motor for this machine. However, I was going to have to swap over to 220 volts and I'm currently only running 110 volts. Uh, to supply this whole machine so this way it works out really well really happy with the way it's cutting and satisfied with the uh, performance so far the real test will be when we start doing some machining so uh, look for that in some upcoming videos well I guess that wraps up this video if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in you like the videos that you see click on the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner when I post a new video, you'll be notified, and if it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check it out. Guys, thumbs up if you liked the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.